Let's give Jesus one more big hand clap of praise. Amen. All right. Happy Easter, everybody. So good to see all of you and see some people we hadn't seen in a long time. Great to be with you. Um, just, it feels good, doesn't it? Feels good. Yeah, one more big praise. Listen, this time last year, this time last year, I was in a room, just about five of us in here by ourselves. And so... Uh, it's good to be back uh, to church on Easter. Um, well, just one more quick announcement before we dive into the message on April 25th. Don't forget, we have our Vision Sunday coming up, and um, we'll be taking up a special offering. Our youth are going to lead worship that day. They're uh, not just the future of the church. They're a big part of what's happening right now, and it's going to be an exciting day. But we're, um, we're, we're believing God um, uh, for something like this um, to expand our sanctuary and bigger lobby and more children's areas and connect the two buildings. And so we're just, we're just praying about all that and uh, we're asking people to bring a special offering above and beyond the tithe and, uh, and just pray about what God would have you to do. And then we're going to step into uh, whatever God, uh, how he provides. You know, we're doing three services on Easter and and uh, I'll let you know how that goes when the day is over. Uh, but we're, we're fine with doing two. But I tell you, doing three is, is, is something else. But, um, and so we, we just believe we need a bigger, bigger room. So uh, we're, we're excited about that. And if you, if you don't have a church home, um, we invite you to be part of this one. God's doing some great things here. We're just trying not to mess it up. Um, but great children's ministries, student ministries, um, amazing people who just love God, who love people. Uh, certainly not a perfect church. Um, it would, if it was, it would have been messed up when I showed up, right? I'd have messed that up. But, um, but there's just amazing people who love God, love people, and are here to serve the community. And um, we would love for you to be a part of that. Um, we also love the Word of God and rely heavily on the Spirit of God and hope you feel that today. So I want to welcome those watching online. We love you and uh, can't wait to see you in person. So if you would this morning, open your Bibles to the book of John, John chapter 20. And uh, I want to talk this morning about wonderful peace, wonderful peace. And John chapter 20 uh, is uh, the passage where it talks about Easter morning and it introduces us to, starts out with uh, the empty tomb <clears throat> that um, that the disciples and Mary and <clears throat> different ones came and realized, recognized that the tomb was empty and um, that Jesus had raised from the dead. And so <clears throat> a lot of times on Easter morning, we focus on Easter morning, but uh, I felt led to focus on Easter evening, uh, what happened that evening, because um, that evening Jesus would come to those who he had spent three and a half years with, his disciples, and um, that he had poured his life into. But if you remember that the last time they were all together uh, was, was in a garden. And, um, and when he, Jesus had asked them to pray, uh, they slept. Right? And when the soldiers came and arrested him, the Bible says they all forsook him. And then if you remember when Jesus was on trial and he looks out and his eyes connect with Peter, one of his closest friends, Peter was denying him. So you can imagine uh, how they were probably feeling in this moment. Um, they're feeling like failures, right? I don't know about you guys, but uh, I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to, you know, you think about Peter, he was the one who was right before the, the cross, he's like, you know, if everybody else forsakes you, right, I'll never forsake you. And he, he did it the worst of all, didn't he? Um, have, haven't y'all done that? Haven't, and I have, you know, made a bunch of promises to God and then, and, and then you, you blow it. Um, and, and that's how they felt. They felt like utter failures. And so I, what I wanted to focus on is how Jesus handled them when he showed up in that room and how he responded when he appeared to them. And I'm sure there was a mixture of emotions. They were excited that he was alive. But also there was like, what's he going to say to us after what we just did? And, and I know a little bit about that. It's like my dad, when I was a kid, he, uh, he worked out of town. So he would leave on Monday morning. And then a lot of times he wouldn't get home till Friday evening. 
And so there was a part of me was excited that he was home. But there was this other thing that throughout the week, when I would mess up, my mom said, whenever your dad gets home. <laughs> so y'all know what I was thinking when he was coming up the road. It was like, there's dad. And it's like, oh, man, I hope he forgets all those things that mom told him about. And I think that's kind of how they were thinking. They were excited, but a little worried about what might happen next. And so let's see how this happens. So John 20, verse 19 says, Then the same day at evening, the same day, meaning Easter, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad. When they saw the Lord. You know, I just think it's great that he even came to them. You know, after they had failed him, after they had messed up, he didn't just write them off. Aren't you glad that Jesus isn't like that? That when we mess up, he's not just like, well, I guess I got to get some new disciples. I mean, what else could I have done? I poured my life into them. They all failed me. I guess I need to go get some different ones. No, he he came to them. and, And when he came, it's not just that he came, but it's how he came. When he came to them, the very first words out of his mouth was peace. And he said, peace be with you. I love that. I love that that he comes and he's saying, look, I'm not mad at you. I come in peace. I'm I'm coming offering you peace. And this is what I want you to see is that Jesus offers peace with God. In fact, look at John 20. He He says that peace be with you. And then he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. You know, I think it's interesting that in the midst of their failures, he doesn't try to get them to try harder. He doesn't doesn't try to say, you know, all right, guys, I'm going to give you one more shot. That's not how he comes. He comes in and he just says, peace be with you. And then he shows them his scars. He shows them that his hands and his side. In other words, he, what he was telling them is that peace with God isn't based on their performance or our performance. If you don't hear anything else today, you need to hear this, that peace with God, our relationship with God is not based on that we went to church today or that we read our Bibles or that we prayed or that we did good deeds. We have peace with God only because of what Jesus did. It's the nails in his hand, the scars in his hands, and the place in his side was what brought us peace with God. In fact, look at what Isaiah 53 says. And and what's amazing about this prophecy in Isaiah 53 is this was written hundreds of years before Christ came. The other thing that's interesting is it talks about crucifixion, and crucifixion didn't even exist yet. The Romans wouldn't even come into power for hundreds of years, and they're the ones who brought the Roman crucifixion. So this is amazing on a lot of different levels. For those of you who are kind of wondering, is the Bible true? This is like proof, one of the proof positives that the Bible's true because they predicted not only that the Messiah would die, but how exactly he would die. And there was no way Jesus could have fulfilled this on his own. So look at this, Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, He was pierced. For our transgressions. Notice he was pierced. That's talking about the nails. He was crushed for our iniquities. That's talking about the weight of him him being smothered as he's hanging on the cross and, 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 and how all of his insides were just crushed. It says the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Notice his punishment brought us peace. The way we have peace with God was all because of the cross. The Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So so that verse is encouraging to me because it lets us know that I'm not alone, that we've all messed up, right? And so if you've messed up, join the club. You're, You're part of the rest of humanity. There's only one who's perfect and his name was Jesus. And, and, but it also tells us that the only reason we have peace with God is not because we are good. It's all because he is good and he went to the cross for us. You know, it's um, his punishment brought us peace. I love the way it's written in the New Testament as Paul writes to the Romans in Romans chapter 5. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, that we're justified means just as if you never sinned. 
It's just like it never happened. And he said, having been justified by faith, not by works, but it's by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. He says we're justified, we're cleared, we're, we're declared innocent, not because of what we did, but because of what Christ did. And because of that, now we have peace with God. He's not angry at us anymore. He's, he's not wanting to take, punish us for our sin. He punished our sin when he punished Christ on the cross. It was for you. It was for me that that happened. And it says now we even have access to grace. We, we can go to the very throne of grace, not because we're good, but because he's good. And notice it says, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. In other words, when you get it, when you understand that, that I have peace with God, not because of what I did, but because of what he did, it brings joy to your life. That, that's why we praise him. That's why we're so happy is that no matter what I've done, I can walk in and I can have joy because I know it, it was all Jesus. And it'll make for a thankful heart. In fact, it says in John 20, it says, When Jesus came and he stood in their midst and he said peace with them, when he showed them his scars, it said the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. In other words, they went from being fearful to being glad just because Jesus was there. Something about the presence of Jesus. He didn't condemn them for their failures. He didn't condemn them for their unbelief. He came to them offering another chance. Aren't you glad Jesus is the God of second chances and third chances? How many need like a hundredth chance or a thousandth chance? And after their failure, when they all forsook him, you know, it wasn't because they were rebellious. They were just afraid. I think we can all get that. I think a lot of us thought, you know, I tell you, by golly, I'll, I'll, you're not going to get me not to go to church. And then we all shut down there for a little bit, right? They were all fearful. And, and I love it that when Jesus showed up, his first words weren't, what happened to you guys? Where were you when I needed you? You know, that's how I'd respond, right? If my buddies left me in my darkest hour, I'd be like, what's up with y'all? It, it was, that's not how he responded. He re, his very first words were peace. And I want you to know that no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you've failed, that there's peace for you and Jesus is, is in our midst today reaching out to you and offering peace. The cross was for you. You know, I love John three sixteen. Y'all know that one. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever would believe uh, would not perish, but, they would, but we would have everlasting life. But I love John three seventeen too. It says, God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world. He came to save the world, right? And that's our message to you today. He didn't come to condemn you. He came to offer peace to everyone who would believe. You know, religion, just so you know the difference, Brandon said, we don't want religion, we want Jesus. See, here's why. is because religion is man's attempt to get to God. If I do enough good works, then maybe God will receive me. Maybe I can have peace with God because of all the good things I did. But here's what the gospel is. Here's the good news we call Christianity, is that God became man in Christ. That, that God sent his only son to the world, and he lived the life that we couldn't and died the death that we should have in our place. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead, proving that he is the son of God. And now he's in heaven interceding, and one day he's coming back again. And the Bible says that if you'll believe that, if you'll receive him as your Lord and Savior, then you can have life and you can have peace with God as well. Peace to whoever will believe. But I, what I love is he doesn't just say it the first time. In verse 21, let's look at that, John 20, verse 21. He says it again. Jesus said to them again, peace to you. See, the first time he said it, it was peace be with you. In other words, we're not fighting here. But then he, he says it again. He says peace to you. In other words, Jesus not only offers us peace with God, but he offers us the peace of God. That, see, you can be saved and have peace with God, but not have peace. Have, you can have peace with God, but not have the peace of God. You can still be worried. You can still live in fear. You can still have j just your life just, just in a torment, even though you know you're saved. But Jesus offers uh, 
two times peace. He says, I want you not only to have peace with God, I want you to have the peace of God in your life. And and it's great to know that that we're saved, but how many know we go through things after we're saved? We, we, We realize that. But listen, God has peace for your life. He has peace. Listen, he has peace for your wounds. It's good to know. Listen, a wound is a place of hurt that hasn't healed yet. Right? If you're wounded, it's a place where you've been hurt um, that hasn't healed yet. You know, a scar. How many of you have a scar somewhere from when you were a kid or something? I got a couple scars. Listen, a scar is just a reminder that one time you were hurt, but it doesn't hurt anymore. And, and here's the thing is that when Jesus showed up, he showed them his scars. He showed them the nail prints in his hands and the place in his side. But he, it wasn't a wound anymore. He wasn't still bleeding. It was healed, but there was a scar there. Listen, it's still there. If you saw Jesus today, the nail prints would still be there. The 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 place in his side is still there. But it's it's not a wound anymore, it's a scar. And his scars are, are a proof and a testimony to us that there's hope for your wounds. See, the Bible says that in Isaiah 53, that by his wounds we are healed. So because of his wounds, there's healing for your wounds. Because his scars, his scars remain as a reminder of what he has brought, what he went through, and what he can bring you through. He still has scars in his hands, but the pain is gone. Listen, when, later on when Thomas shows up and Jesus said, come on, you can put your fingers in the nail prints. In other words, it doesn't hurt anymore. You can put your hand in my side. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt anymore. It's just a reminder of what I went through and what I'm going to bring you through. It, his scars were a reminder that there's life beyond the wounds. And I want to speak to some of you here this morning that have been wounded and you've been hurt. I want you to know, listen, there is life beyond divorce. That's a wound in your life, but there's life beyond that wound. There's life beyond bankruptcy. There's, there's healing for those who've lost a job during COVID. Maybe you've lost your job and you don't know, and you, you feel all the pain of that and all the wounded of how that went down. But listen, there's hope beyond that. Maybe you've lost a loved one and, and you just don't even know how you're going to move forward. Can I tell you there's healing for that? Because of his scars, there's healing for your wounds. Maybe people have disappointed you. Or harsh words were spoken over you in your life. Can I tell you, Jesus can relate. His scars are the proof that he can relate to your wounds. Listen, the Bible says he was despised and rejected of men. His his closest, the people he died for, put him on a cross. Those who were closest to him rejected him. And his scars show us there's life beyond the rejection of people. There's life beyond the curse. Whatever curse may have been spoken over you. The Bible says that there is no curse that's worse than the cross of Christ. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And the scars are a reminder that this is what I went through, but this is not where I am today. The wounds are healed. And that's what he wants for your life. Listen, he not only has peace for your wounds, but he has peace to your mind. You know, sometimes it's we can we can forgive others for what they did to us, but a lot of times it's hard to forgive ourselves for our own failures. And and that's where they were. It was they had all failed him. The the ones that he put his trust in, they had all failed him and they they were having a hard time getting past their past. And and I can I just tell you Jesus wants us to spend more time looking ahead than behind. You know that's why your windshield's bigger than a rear view mirror right? Rear view mirror is about like this. He's saying, it's okay to look up there every now and then, but you need to spend most of your time looking ahead, not behind. Every now and then we can look back and say, thank you, Jesus, for where you've brought me from. But I'm, th- I'm even more thankful about where I'm headed and what, what you have done for my life. You know, I always often think about Paul the Apostle, and you know, he wrote two-thirds of your New Testament, so you need to get to know him a little bit when you read your Bible. But the interesting thing about him is many of you didn't know this. You picture Paul with a halo and all that. But before he became a Christian, he was a persecutor. He persecuted Christians. He would drag them out of their homes and have them put on trial and put to death. So you can imagine when he gets saved 
and Jesus saves him, you know the devil used that against him, right? You know, you really think you're going to talk to them after what you did? And every day he had to battle that. And so he writes this in Philippians 3, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And, and you can, you know, think about who's writing it and from the heart. But Philippians 3, verse 13, it says, Brethren, I don't count myself to have apprehended. In other words, I haven't arrived yet. But this one thing I do. In other words, this one thing I have to do every day. I forget those things which are behind and I reach forward to those things which are ahead. I'm always pressing toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in, in Christ Jesus. In other words, I can't focus on what I did. I'm thankful God saved me from that, but i got to focus on God's purpose for my life. I, and, and thankfully, the Lord provides peace to our mind. But he can also um, give peace to your mind so you can fulfill your purpose, so you can focus on what's ahead. You know, I love how it's written in the book of Hebrews. It says that the blood of Jesus is actually able to cleanse our conscience from dead works so that we can serve the living God. You know, one of the things is, you know, oftentimes is like we want to move forward. We, we, we believe that, well, maybe God had a purpose for me, but we think we've blown it so bad because of our past. But he says, listen, I can cleanse even your conscience from what you did. Listen, can I tell you, that's good news. It's one thing to know you're forgiven, but another thing for God to just uh, lift the weight off of your conscience for the things, the places that we failed him, so that we can serve the living God. In other words, we're not just forgiven, but he still has a purpose for our life. And he doesn't just, just save us and say, well, you're saved, but, you know, I can't use you anymore. No, he still wants to use our lives. In fact, I love that when Jesus showed up in John 20 in their midst, in verse 21, when Jesus spoke to them, he said, my peace I, I give to you. He said, as the Father sent me, I also send you. His very first words to these failures who failed him, and they had to be thinking, well, there's no way he can use us now after what we did. His very first words were, listen, we're at peace, it's all good, and listen, I still want you to fulfill the mission. Just as my father sent me, now I'm going to send you out. In fact, that word sent there is the word where we get our word uh, apostle. In other words, he's saying, you've been my disciples, you've been my followers, but now you're going to be apostles. He gave them a promotion. Come on, doesn't God think different than we think? And, and that's the amazing thing about peace. It's one thing to forgive them. It's another thing to still believe in them and entrust them with the great task of, of fulfilling the gospel. You know, I remember when I was much younger, uh, I was probably 19 years old, and, and um, I just had a little job, you know, I was going as a college student and, and, and making minimum wage and all that. And then one summer, my dad, he, they were doing a project. He was a builder, and they had this humongous pile of dirt. It was as big as his room, for real. And, uh, and he had an old dump truck and an old backhoe. And he's like, Troy, if you want to sell that dirt, I'll show you how to drive the backhoe and the truck. And, and I was like, for real? And he said, yeah. And back then, it was like $35 a load. Y'all wish it was that now, right? I mean, it was cheap. And uh, he said, put your little ad in the paper, topsoil, dirt cheap. Put your number in there. Man, my phone rang off the hook. And I'm hauling dirt all over the place. So I remember going to this one place. I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know if you're supposed to have a license for that, but I didn't have a license. I didn't have any special license to drive that truck. Had no training, no CDLs, nothing like that. You know, the thing, it didn't have any air brakes. It only, it died a lot. And so I remember pulling up to this guy and I'm hauling this dirt to this guy on the lake and uh, this just you know, straight down in this hill and I pull up and the guy's like, you know, I'd like you to back down this hill and just dump the dirt, you know, down in this. He had a, he had a flag where he wanted the dirt, this special spot, you know. And, uh, and just something inside of me thought, I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, backing down the hill with 10 tons of dirt and that old truck. But he seemed to know what he was talking about. And so I was like, <laughs> he knew more than me. So, so I got it, and I'm backing down the truck. As soon as I started backing down that hill, uh, no brakes, truck dies, and I'm just flying down this hill. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking in the mirrors, and I take a ditch. Truck turns over. The dirt wasn't anywhere near the flag. It was all over his yard. Uh, and, and, and the truck's on its side. The door's crushed. And I come climbing out of the truck. And the guy's eyes are huge. And I'm like, yeah, it didn't turn out so well, did it? <laughs> you know who the first call I made was to? I'm like, Dad, you're not going to believe this. 
And uh, he said, I'll be there in just a little bit. He wasn't too surprised, really. Um, <laughs> he saw the truck before he sent me out. But uh, so, so I go out, and he shows up, and he gets out of his truck. And I'm thinking, you know, how he handles this, I mean, this was devastating to me. I mean, this is like big stuff. Trucks smash, dirt in the middle of this guy's yard. It's the biggest thing in my world. My dad just gets that big smile on his face. He says, oh, it'll be all right. We'll fix this. Come on, that made all the difference. But just his presence made all the difference. And then, and then he was, you know, he got the guy's dozer, turned the track back up. The door was smashed. He said, well, you'll have to enter the other side. You'll have to climb over. He said, but I think it'll be all right. He says, go ahead. How many loads does he need? I said, he needs like eight more. And he says, well, go get him the rest of the dirt. He still believed in me. He's like, well, don't back down the driveway, but I mean, just, just do it. And, and he... Listen, the fact that he didn't just forgive me for wrecking the truck, but he still believed in me to finish the task. And I tell you, it, it changed my life. And that's what Jesus did when he showed up. Just, just his presence strengthened their weakness. I love that when it says in John 20, it says Jesus came and just stood in their midst and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. You know, when I saw that dump truck, it was like the biggest thing in my world. I couldn't imagine life beyond that, that what are we going to do? But when my dad got out with that smile on, the, on his face and said, oh, it'll be all right. You know what that told me? He'd been through worse than that. And he wasn't worried because he'd seen worse. And, and when Jesus showed up in the midst of their fearful circumstances because Jesus offers peace in the midst of fearful circumstances. Here they are locked behind closed doors for fear of the Jews, it says. And when Jesus showed up and he showed them his scars, what he was saying is, look, guys, I've been through worse than this. You're afraid of them? Can I just tell you, they put me on a cross and here I am. You know, you're afraid of death. I overcame death. You're afraid to walk through that door. Listen, I was sealed up in a tomb by myself. And God raised me from the dead and rolled away the tomb. And listen, these scars are proof that there's life. And he, he gave them this promise. He said, the same spirit who raised me up is in you. Becky, if you'd come, he's... He promises us life, and his scars promise that there's peace for that. I love what Romans 8, 11 says, the Spirit of God. Think about this on this Easter morning. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, get a hold of this, everybody, lives in you. If you're saved this morning, you're not just saved and have a ticket to heaven. That's great. You have peace with God. That's awesome. But can I tell you, he not just has peace with you, but he has peace for you through the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is now in you. And just like God raised Jesus from the dead, he'll give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit that's in you. See, here's what's awesome on this day, this Russian day. When Jesus showed up and he said, peace to you, look at verse 22. He said, just as I'm, my Father sent me, I send you. And when he said this, says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Can I just tell you that the Lord hasn't given us, here they are afraid, and listen, the Lord hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us the Holy Spirit. And his remedy for their failure and for their fear was they needed something from heaven. His his answer to them was not, all right, guys, you all need to try harder. Aren't you glad uh, that's not my message today? Y'all just need to try harder. What's wrong with y'all? You need to try harder. Y'all need to repent. You need to try harder. That wasn't his message when they failed. His message was, I'm giving you peace. And everything you need, I have. That was what he was saying. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. You know, think about this. They had been with Jesus for three and a half years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They didn't need another teaching. 
If they heard all of the messages and still failed, they didn't need to see another miracle. What they needed was a power that they didn't have. And what Jesus was saying, he didn't say, guys, sit down. I'm going to teach you how to do this. No, he said, guys, you need something you don't have. And he breathed on them. And when he breathed on them, listen, this is the creator. This is the same creator who reached down in dirt in Genesis and, and made formed man out of the dirt of the earth. And the Bible says he breathed into his nostrils and he became alive. That's the same Jesus who was here with them that day and said, guys, I know your failures. I know you're afraid. You're nothing but dust. But can I tell you something? I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going to breathe on you so you have something from heaven to do what you could never do before. And how many of you would say this morning, I don't want to make more promises this Easter or leave here trying harder. What I want, I want something from heaven. I'd like to have a breath of a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit on our lives so that we can live in this season at this time, the most trying time in my life, in history. We need something fresh from heaven. And as I was thinking about this and three times in this this chapter when Jesus says, peace, peace, peace. I, I just kept thinking about that song that we used to sing in the church I grew up in, at, at peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father. In other words, it's not something we work up. It's something that comes down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. We don't even talk like that anymore, but fathom it just means it's beyond my imagination. Billows is just like wave after wave after wave of peace and love. Every time you face a situation, just another wave of peace, another wave of love. How many of you would like to have that this morning? Just wonderful peace. Come on, let's just sing that. Sing that, Becky. We praise you, God. Peace. We ask for your peace, God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. say, you know what, I, I need peace today. You need peace with God or you need the peace of God. Listen, we just want to pray for you today. Believe that you can receive that peace. Maybe you need a fresh start. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus as a kid or whenever and you would just say, you know what, when I, when I gave my life to Jesus, I thought I'll never fail him. I'll serve him. Jesus, if you just give me a shot, I'll, I'll, I'll serve you to the rest for the rest of my life. And and since then, you realize, like the disciples, you've blown it, you've messed up. Can I just tell you, you can have a fresh start today, and there's still peace for you. Jesus is in our midst offering peace to you. But listen, there, remember, there was one disciple who wasn't there. His name was Thomas. And when the other disciples said, we saw the Lord, he's alive. He said, I don't believe it. I won't believe it until I put my finger in his nail prints. Well, guess what? About eight days later, they were all together. Jesus showed up again. And he looked at Thomas and he showed him his scars. And he said, go ahead, Thomas, right here. You can put your finger and you can put your hand in my side. And he said these words to, to Thomas. He said, don't be unbelieving, but believing. Listen, peace is provided. Jesus has provided it for you. But the only way you receive it is by believing. You have to Believe that what he did, he did it for you. Come on, stand to your feet this morning. I want to pray for you before we leave. We're going to sing one more song before we go, and it's your opportunity to pray and just connect with God. But listen, if, if you and God, you need a fresh start, and maybe you're not at peace with the Lord, 
he's offering you peace today and and you can receive that and we want to we're going to pray with you. We're not going to call you out. We're not going to call you up front. We're not going to embarrass you. This is between you and God, but you can have peace with God right now just by believing and saying, Jesus, I want your peace. I believe that what Jesus did on the cross, he did for me. I believe that the scars are for me. I thank you that the punishment that was upon you brought me peace. So if that's you today and you want us to pray for you that you can have peace with God, would you just lift your hand? Just We've all been there at some point or another. You just lift your hand. We want to pray for you. Come on. Amen. Amen. How many of you would say, listen, I have peace with God, but I'm going through some stuff right now. I'm battling with some things. Maybe it's in your mind. Maybe it's some stuff from your past. Maybe it's just a storm you're in right now, and you need Jesus to speak peace to your mind or to the storm that you're in. If that's you, can I see your hand? Come on, after COVID-19, I can only imagine what you might be going through. Father God, I just pray. I just lift up every situation. Lord, for those who don't know you, God, I pray that they can know you through a relationship with Jesus. For those who are going through a trial, who are going in the midst of a storm, God, I pray that you speak peace to the storm in their life. God, I pray, Lord, that as we leave here and go to live in this crazy world, God, we love it here. It's peaceful here. But God, as we go out into this crazy world, Lord, that you would give us today something from heaven, Lord, just a fresh breath, fresh wind, Lord, that just... Just breathe your life into us, Lord, to give us extra so that we can go out into this world. God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Come on.